Western New York webinar on, on orbital welding. My name is Jeff Namey and I am the Director of Sales and Marketing at Twice Lock Western New York. This is the second in our series uh, in, in our series of webinars. Our first webinar was on regulators and if you're interested in, in view, reviewing our webinar presentation, you can find it on our YouTube page. Our next webinar is going to focus on hoses and the correct selection and best installation practices. And we'll be announcing a date for the webinar at the end of the week. Our presenter today is Lehman Manley. Lehman has been an associate of Swage Lock Western New York for the, for the last 16 years. For the past 10 years, he has overseen our sales and rental program. Lehman has great experience, Lehman has great experience with the orbital welder in a number of industries that utilize orbital welding, including semiconductor, biofarm, food, and oil and gas. Everybody will be muted during the presentation. We will unmute you uh, during the question and answer periods of the presentation. You can also use the chat function to send your question in so that Lehman can answer them as they occur. Um, you also can minimize the viewing blocks so that it doesn't interfere with the PowerPoint by using the minimize button um, at the corner of the block. Lehman, we look forward to your presentation. So let's get started. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Jeff, and thank you all for attending today's webinar. Um, today we're going to review the following topics on the subject of orbital welding. We're going to answer the question, what is orbital welding? Why use orbital welding and for what applications? What industries use orbital welding? We'll have the opportunity to watch a weld being set up and performed via YouTube video. And then at the end, we'll follow up by reviewing what your local Swage Lock office can do for you to support your welding project with our sales, rental, and in-house welding capabilities. So we'll answer the first question, what is orbital welding? Orbital welding is a fully autogenous, so no filler materials being added to the weld joint, specialized welding process whereby the arc is rotated mechanically 360 degrees around a static workpiece, either tubing or pipe. The process was developed to address the issue of operator error in gas tungsten arc welding processes, known as GTAW. In orbital welding, computer-controlled process runs with little intervention from the operator. The process is used specifically for high-quality, repeatable welding. Now we'll discuss the history of orbital welding and swage locks involvement. The orbital welding process was created in the 1960s by Roderick Rohrberg of North American Aviation to address fuel and hydraulic fluid leaks in and around the plumbing of the X-15 rocket. Swage locks involvement became, began in 1986. Since then, Swage Lock has designed and manufactured numerous versions of the power supplies and weld heads to improve our performance and capabilities. Swage Lock's welding systems are manufactured in Cleveland, Ohio. Orbital welding is a proven technology and Swage Lock is a trusted brand in the industry with decades of experience. Now we'll talk about what industries use orbital welding and why. Orbital welding has become the standard joining method for high integrity gas and liquid systems used in the semiconductor and pharmaceutical manufacturing industries. These systems require extreme purity and leak tight integrity. Here on the screen, we've got a couple examples of some weld mints for those two specific industries. The small diameter weld mint in the center of the screen is quarter inch outside diameter tubing welded to a series of micro fit connectors to the valve body of a diaphragm style valve, very common in the semiconductor industry. The larger weld mint in the lower right hand corner is a 90 degree weld elbow welded to a sanitary type end connection. 
These are very common in the biofarm industry as well as food, beverage, and dairy. So the orbital welding technology is versatile enough to fit even a wider range of applications and in industries as well, such as aerospace, chemical engineering, food, beverage, and dairy, sanitary, power generation, as well as oil and gas. Now these are the most common, but the technology is versatile enough to fit even a wider variety of applications. Now why use orbital welding? Orbital welding is ideal for critical applications where weld integrity and cleanliness are required. The weld quality is superior as there is 100% full penetration of the tubing and the weld is regulated in an automated process, eliminating craters, sugaring, or gaps at the weld joint. Orbital welding is a low maintenance and safer procedure compared to other welding methods. Some highlights of orbital welding, easy, quick field setup, repeatable, accurate operation, integrated weld control, and real-time monitoring and recording capabilities to meet the document, documentation requirements of the industry. Now at this time, we're gonna show you a YouTube video that's gonna run through the complete setup in operation of this swage lock welding system. Typically, in, in more normal circumstances, we can provide this, this demonstration to you at your facility. Um, as things improve, this is, is going to be more available to our customers as well, us coming back on site and showing this to you. Um, for this webinar purpose, we're gonna show you this YouTube video here. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the video. And I believe the audio will play along for you as well. If you cannot hear the, the audio portion of it, please let me know. But um, I believe you'll be able to hear it as well. The video is approximately seven minutes long. The Swagelock M200 orbital welder is actually the most current version of our Swagelock orbital welding capabilities which have existed since the 1980s. This is a technology that we've been working on for a long time we're really familiar with. The M200 was designed with easy use in mind. Setting the equipment up is really straightforward and easy. It runs off standard power outlets out of the wall. Connecting a weld head is as easy as four connections. There's a cable for a remote. That's how the M200 actually drives the equipment. A purge connection for OD purge gas, and two power connections for the current to actually travel down in the electrode. Once the M200 is plugged in, startup is literally as easy as flipping a switch. One of the best features about the M200 is how easy it is to create a program or a procedure for welding. Using auto create function in the equipment, all that's necessary for the user to come up with is the name of the procedure and the name of the programmer. Everything else is based on a drop down menu determined by what material you're working with and what purge gas you have, what type of joint you want to make. So it's really straightforward, really easy for a user to leverage all that swage locks learned about orbital welding because all that knowledge is in the equipment and AutoCreate makes it really easy to access. Swagelock manufactures several different sizes of weld heads to accommodate material from 16th inch all the way up to 4 inch. What we've done in order to minimize the amount of components is create collets for these weld heads and their associated fixture blocks. So switching a fixture block for say the 20 inch weld head, which will accommodate half inch to two inch tubing is as simple as changing a few collets with a handful of screws. Um, this allows one fixture block to handle tubing sizes from again half inch to two inch. When you're orbital welding, keeping the tube or the 
joint between the two pieces of material supported adequately is extremely important. So this fixturing is easy to use, but very robust. In addition to making sure the fixture block has appropriate size collets, the electrode has to be positioned correctly for each size of tubing. Using the electrode change button, the electrode is moved to a position where the set screws are accessible. When you write a procedure for the M200, it gives you a dimension for a gauge and a part number for an electrode. It really streamlines the process. Using the gauge as a reference, you can ensure that the tip of the electrode is the exact dimension it needs to be away from the surface of the material to create a successful weld. We talked a little bit about how important the fitment is, the joint between the two pieces of material before you actually do the weld. And we've got several pieces of equipment to help accommodate that, one of which is the facing tool. This is a pretty straightforward piece of equipment. It's a drill motor that runs a carbide bit around the end of the tube. We still recommend cutting the tube as square as possible, either using a tube saw or a tube cutter, but this equipment removes all burrs, makes sure the end of the tubing is square, flush, ready to go. Again, it's a fusion weld, so we want everything as square and true and straight as possible. And the electrode is so close to the surface of the material that any burrs or defects sticking up like that can definitely create a sticking point the electrode can hit those. So smooth, burr-free, well-prepped tubing is really, really important to the orbital welding process. Process. And the swage lock facing tool makes it really easy. When using the M200, supplying inert purge gas through the ID and OD of the tubing is really important. Flow and pressure through the inside of the piece help support the weld bead and keep it clean. So we use a pressure regulator to drop the bottle pressure down to an acceptable level and then we use a flow meter to set a desired flow through the inside of the piece. And then we use a magnetic pressure gauge to check that pressure inside of the piece before we make the weld. Once the fixture block is prepared and all your other prep work is done, one of the last steps is to actually put the tubing into the fixture block. This is simplified using another swage lock centering gauge. This actually gives your first piece of material a reference point so that it's right in the middle of the fixture block and when the second piece is inserted, it butts right up against the first piece and that's how we ensure that that joint is centered in the fixture block. To install the weld head into the fixture block when the tubing joint is ready, it's simple as sliding the weld head into place. There's a simple locking mechanism to make sure the weld head is held securely into the fixture block. So all the setup leads to this. Once everything's positioned, the payoff comes with the press of a button. The green start button initiates the weld procedure. You may have to manually turn on the ID purge gas. Everything else is now controlled by the machine. So on the screen of the M200, you will see a status wheel to show where the electrode's at, what it's doing. If you have tacks on your program, it will start with those. And while you can separate tacks from the weld bead, a common procedure is to do the tacks and then immediately do the weld bead. The electrode will start the weld and it will actually delay just for a couple of seconds depending on the material size. That ensures that we've got full penetration through the material before the electrode and the weld bead start traveling around the material. The status wheel will show you where the electrode's at, what the weld is doing, active weld versus completed weld. If you encounter any issues, it'll note them here on this wheel. The entire process is pretty well contained once the weld head is assembled to the fixture block. And at this point, your setup is repeatable unless you're making dramatic changes to the pieces you're welding. You can reuse electrodes multiple times as long as they're not fouled or dirty. So we can be really efficient from this point forward. And the program that we wrote using the AutoCreate function, it's designed to give the user high quality results as quickly as possible so you can be as efficient as possible with the equipment.
All right, now that we've seen the welder set up and in operation, are there any questions at this point? We can take a quick pause here to answer any of those. All right, I'm not seeing any questions. We will proceed. Liam, and I have a question. Can you uh, cover what uh, wall thicknesses typically you can weld with this equipment? Absolutely. Um, so in the auto create feature, it's got the most common wall thicknesses for each outside diameter you select. Um, so for half inch, for example, the most common are 035, 049, 065. Those are all selectable. Um, in regards to max wall thickness, right around 0 0.109 is, is the upper limit of that. So just shy of eighth of an inch for a, a full penetration butt weld. Great, thanks. And is that similar for pipe as well? Like you mentioned, Correct. you can do yep. pipe. You can weld piping as well. It will be a, a nominal reference for the sizing of the outside diameter, but there's unique colleting for pipe systems as well. Great, thank you. You got it. Any other questions? Or we'll, we'll move right along going through some of a component overview at this point. All righty. So now we're gonna break down the individual components and we have literature that's available all on all of these components as well. We'll just talk about a few of the high points. So now we're looking at the Swagelock M200 power supply, our, our latest greatest revision of the power supply. So some highlights and features of the unit, provides precision and control with easy to use touchscreen operation, as you saw in, the, in the, the YouTube video presentation, as well as documentation. It's gonna store each weld record on the hard drive of the unit. It also has a thermal printer where you can print out a, a ticket or coupon if you need a paper copy of your weldment. It's gonna monitor and record weld output performance in real time. The high resolution color touchscreen, which is suitable for industrial use. Peak output capabilities up to 200 amps. Again, it's gonna provide printed or electronic documentation of weld output performance. So each weld it makes, it makes a documented record of that weld for your quality records. It's available in multiple languages. It meets the CE requirements. The power supply itself is very lightweight and portable at 50 pounds. You can run it on 110 or up to 220 volt power, and you can be out 100 feet on an extension cord. So ease of use on a job site or moving around as you make your welds. Now we'll talk about the weld heads. So Swage Lock offers a vast variety of different weld heads for your different OD sized tubing and footprint considerations. You wanna to try to right size the weld head to the job you're doing. That way it's, it offers the, the smallest footprint from the components to be able to weld up your, your system. So some features of the weld head, reliable, consistent orbital welding of tube or pipe, ensure proper weld head power supply connection with polarized power connectors to the M200, provides optical speed control without the need of a tach tachometer or calibration of the, of the weld head. And again, you're performing welds on outside diameters ranging from 1 16th of an inch to four inch or two millimeter to 1 14 millimeter. You can get greater flexibility to perform welds farther away from the power supply with a weld head extension so you can get the the actual welding taking place farther away from the welding power supply. You can bring the weld head to the job. Now we'll take a quick look at the fixture block and the colleting. So again, these fixture blocks are configurable to allow the operator to weld different sized fittings and types of fittings depending on their project and their footprint. So the collets are gonna provide the gripping force to secure your, your weld pieces. It's a really easy to use and adjustable system. It reduces the weld variability by securing your weld. And it's gonna to contribute to the safety and consistency of the welder operations. So 
So a few of the selection options are piping collets, tubing collets, or microfit collets to get to those small tangent weldments like we saw in that first example of that quarter inch weld. Now I'd like to talk about what Swage Lock Western New York offers in our over to welding service program, your local Swage Lock office in Buffalo, Rochester and Syracuse. So we offer a complete service program to our customers. We have a rental program where you can rent a complete orbital welding system or any of the components you need if you own the existing power supply. And during that rental, we're gonna provide complete project support. We're gonna be available at all hours of the day for troubleshooting, equipment repair or equipment swap out to minimize downtime on the job. Along in that training envelope, there's the job site training, which we just talked about for your rentals, or we can host a one or five day training event at our facility. We also sell the equipment. You can buy a complete system or individual components to add to your existing inventory of equipment. One of the services we offer for our, our customers that own the equipment is calibration in our Rochester office. Many ISO compliant job sites will require an annual calibration of the power supply and having this service locally can help out in those situations where, where maybe a unit wasn't calibrated and you need to get it on the job site quickly. We can turn those about, around very quickly for our customers located in our centrally located Rochester service center. So as you think about it, however you wanna approach your orbital welding project, Swage Lock Western New York can help you. If you wanna take on the welding aspect, we have our sales and rental program, or we can do the welding on your behalf in-house with our custom solutions assembly program, where we can do the weldments for you in our Rochester office. That completes the presentation at this point. Are there, are there any more questions that it came about? We'll take a moment here to, to answer any of those that you might have. Hey, Lehman, this is uh, Pete again. How long does it take to get somebody trained uh, so they're reasonably competent with uh, this equipment? In regards to operator training, we can get somebody up and running in probably three to four hours. Um, that's going to go through the complete setup, similar to you saw in the video that we watched. We're going to unpack everything, show you how to connect it. Um, when a customer rents from Swage Lock Western New York, the only thing we ask of them is to supply the bottle of gas. Um, we're going to provide everything um, needed to, to operate the machine, including Allen wrenches, everything you need, so there's no forgotten components when the, when the job is getting ready. So typically that takes about three to four hours to get them comfort, comfortable in, in setting up the equipment, um, reviewing operation of it, and then we supervise them making a handful of welds until they're comfortable with it. And then throughout the duration of the project, we're only a phone call away to, to keep them on track with the job. Great, and would that person need to have some sort of special qualifications or be familiar with welding, or what's your uh, guidance with that? No, that's a great question. And, and that can vary uh, from job to job. We can get the operator competent locally on, on how to run it. Most jobs, however, are gonna require a certified weld program to ASME Section 9. Swage Lock offers that training class over a five-day training class in, in our factory in Solon, Ohio. In that class, they're gonna spend five days learning the operation of the weldment or the welder. And on their final day, they're gonna provide some physical testing pieces that are gonna be tested by an independent third party company doing physical destruction tests of that. Then if they passed that third party physical testing, they would then have a certified weld procedure that would allow them to go on to a job site with. That's great, thank you. Thank you. Lehman, we have questions? another uh, question. <clears throat> Uh, what are the most important specifications and information to include when getting a quote or describing the scope of an orbital welding application? No, that's a great question. Um, what we want to talk about first off is what size outside diameter of the material you're going to be welding. Um, 
that helps us select the components that are going to be needed for the rental quote. And if you're going to weld various sizes that might include various weld heads to be part of that package. Um, the welder rentals are offered on a weekly rental or a monthly rental. So you can, you know, commit to the weekly rental. And if you, the job keeps going forward, you just roll on to that second week. Um, so we'd want to know the outside diameter of, of the different weldments involved. Um, what type of material you're going to be welding. The welder can do the stainless steel family, some exotic alloys, Inconel, Monel as well. Um, and that way we can go in and, and pre-program the power supply exactly how you need it. Um, that, that'll get us pretty close right off the bat. And then based on that, we can have a final few discussions as we get closer to the start. But that'll, that'll get us really close to everything we need right there. And let us know if that answered your question. Any other questions? Liam, I have a question about the electrode uh, life. Uh, what sort of uh, life do you get and how can you improve that? <clears throat> what, what sort of considerations? Sure. So typically, you're going to get, as long as you don't have any issue, you're going to get 30 to 40 welds per electrode. Um, and that can vary depending on the cleanliness of, of the tube or the components that you're welding. Um, if they, you know, have some cutting oils on them or a little contaminated, that's going to, you know, push that number to the lower side there is it's going to build up uh, contaminant on the tip of the electrode. Um, the electrode can be cleaned in between welds with a, with a little bit of Scotch-Brite abrasive to remove any of the carbon buildup there. Um, so if you're welding clean material and you don't have an electrode touch, obviously, where you don't deburr the tubing correctly and the electrode physically touches the, the outside diameter of the weldment, um, that would be a, an instant pull of that electrode in starting over. So if you have clean material, and um, you're cleaning the electrode in between welds, you can get north of 30 welds per electrode. Good, I presume the uh, purge gas plays a role in that too. Absolutely, yep. You wanna make sure you have a properly purged weld joint, uh, minimize oxidization at the weld joint. Great, thanks. Any other questions out there? Alrighty, we're gonna share some information at the end here if you have any additional questions. Um, obviously, if you can reach out to your local office as well. So we'll move on to the next slide here. So I'd like to offer a thank you to everybody that attended the webinar today. It was uh, my pleasure in presenting this information to you. Um, this was a new means of getting this in front of our customers. Um, so if you wanna see this real time in person, just let us know. We have our general inbox website listed here, info at wnyfst.swagelock.com. You can go to our website as well and gather information there. I'm seeing an icon here that might have been a question. Take a stab at it. I've got to thank you. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you for attending. So with that, I will say thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope all is well. Thank you.